Alright. Alright, I'll send a couple of people down there. Alright, cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Somebody find me, Olson. And get a hold of Ken. We've got we've got we've got we've got we've got Welcome to Matt Reviews Books, and I am Matt, and this is a book channel, book related, book publishing, book news, book, if it's ink on a page, I'm going to probably talk about it, because I can. Well, I have a cornucopia of publishing newsletters I subscribe to in my email, and going through that, you know, looking for advanced reading copies, and news, publishing news, who's writing what book, or who died, or just maybe like today, for example, starting off with, there is a proposed law, state law, in Missouri, and I'm in California, so it doesn't really bother me. Well, it bothers me. It won't affect me. Um, but there's a state law in, uh, proposed state law in Missouri that would create a parent review uh, board for libraries. And whether or not uh, um, there are appropriate, um, whether book there are age-appropriate books that the library could carry or not. Uh, this is from Publishers Weekly. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'll put the link uh, in below. But it's from January 17. But uh, a proposed bill in Missouri that seeks to establish parent boards as a condition of state funding, with the boards having the power to decide which age-appropriate materials can be accessible to minors within the library. And librarians who refuse uh, to comply with the board's decisions could be subject to a fine and up to a year in prison. Well, first of all, as a writer, as somebody who likes books, and as uh, also a former reporter who really uh, enjoys First Amendment rights, uh, this is that's bad. So if you live in Missouri, probably get a hold of your your uh, state representative. So uh, even if you're not in Missouri, you you might want you should be aware of this. It's one of those things that as soon as you start talking about uh, limiting access to books in public libraries um, based on content, well, that's just that's censorship. If you're a Witcher fan. And, uh, well, honestly, I just started watching the, uh, series on Netflix. I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in it. I like it. That's I, definitely a, a fun, uh, fun series. But the Witcher series was, were books. It was a book first, a book series. Apparently other people, like me, got, or, or have become, like, interested in, uh, those books. I haven't gone out to buy them, but a lot of people are, which means that Orbit Books is putting the Witcher series back into reprint. All of them. Uh, 500,000 copies. Uh, I can tell you that anytime a book goes back to reprint uh, and it's getting popularized, well, we like it here at Matt Reviews Books because, well, we started off liking old books that nobody tends to remember. Witcher series. I'm going to go find it. I'm going to go look for it eventually. Um, it'll be buried with the rest of the uh, pile of books that I have. Okay, so if you know me, I like the classics. Uh, and one of the classics that I have not read, I want to, I'm going to, but I haven't got there yet, is Slaughterhouse-Five, Kurt Vonnegut. Maybe, instead of reading the original, I'll go pick up the forthcoming graphic novel adaptation from Boom Media. I mean, I'm all in favor of graphic novel adaptations of any book, honestly. It, it, for, for what it's worth, coupling somebody's artistic vision, what they visualize with the book um, in an illustrated manner, I like that. That's a good thing. I think the... Um, artistic interpretation of an artist, of an illustrator, with the uh, the book, the narrative style, flow, I'm all good for that. 
So the uh, graphic novel adaptation of Slaughterhouse-Five will be published September of this year, September 2020. Um, that's a long time to wait. This is the first time Vonnegut's work has been adapted into a graphic novel. It's a worthwhile one. I mean, Slaughterhouse-Five. All right, and finally, last story is, this is from The Guardian, January 10th, on The Guardian. John Le Carre uh, won, wins, or won, I guess, a uh, $100,000 prize for contribution to democracy. He won the Olaf Palm Prize, and uh, which is an award given for an outstanding achievement in the spirit of the assassinated Swedish Prime Minister. He is going to donate that prize money to, let's see if I can pronounce this, Medicines Sans Frontiers. It's French. I don't speak French. I don't know how to pronounce French. I'm guessing that's the international version of Doctors Without Borders. So that's kind of cool. You know, if you don't, if you know, I'm, I like John Le Carre. In fact, I like a lot of the books I put, I review here. So this is the end. Uh, uh, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some information out of it. I'll put all the links for the articles uh, down below in the description box. And um, yeah, go ahead, like, comment, uh, and subscribe. I like the subscribers. Uh, it's a vanity thing, totally a vanity thing. More importantly is I like the comments. I like the interaction with you guys. And um, But in the meantime, I got to go to the store. And I'll see you next time.